Getting into guiding shouldn't be prohibitively expensive. Sometimes you don't need a full-size guide scope riding piggyback on top of your main telescope to start taking long exposures. Sometimes a small compact finder scope is all you need. To that end, I'm going to talk to you about the Astro Essentials Mini Guide Scope here and the ZWO ASI 120mm guide camera that was sent to me from First Light Optics for review. Let's start today with the guide scope. Astro Essentials is a brand that deals with supplying astronomy items at more affordable prices. Your Astro Essentials, so to speak. Hmm? Now this guide scope is strikingly similar to the ZWO Mini Finder Guider, but the Astro Essentials is £30 cheaper. It has a really nice feel to it, it's all metal construction, the build quality is sturdy, and it just doesn't feel cheap. It feels like a more premium product in the hand. You focus this guide scope by undoing the locking ring here and then unscrewing the lens from the body. Now, this isn't the smoothest way to focus something. It takes a long time and your camera loop's gonna be bouncing all over the place. However, once this is all locked down, the focus should not shift anywhere at all. It comes with three different finder shoes as well, mainly the Cinta Vixen style, which is useful for Celestron and Skywatcher products, things like that. But the finder shoe is interchangeable and I'm sure you're going to find one to match the telescope finder shoe that you need. One issue is that you can only make adjustments left or right and then tighten it back down onto the shoe. This means you have no up or down adjustment, only left or right as I mentioned. Not that left down right up really matters in space though. And whilst this seems like a restriction, let me remind you that this telescope is wide and fast. It is 128mm focal length f4. And the fact that it is so wide means that the chances are very high that you're going to be able to find your target in the guide camera and then you're going to easily find a star to guide on near your target. It even has T2 threads on the back of it in case you want to attach a camera directly. The guide scope also has a huge focal range on it. You can unscrew this to about 60 millimeters. And if that's still not enough to get focus, you can always pull the camera out a bit more and then tighten up in order to reach focus. There's not much said about the glass in this, however at this price point I'm expecting slightly lower quality glass. When you're guiding with a mono guide camera, the highest quality glass in your guide scope or multi lenses, to me at least, isn't really high on the shopping list, so you know what? It does the job just fine. Alright, that's enough about the scope now, onto the camera. The ZWO ASI 120mm comes in two varieties. You have a wider one that is more suitable for being an all sky camera and you have this one that's shaped like a barrel. It's called the ASI 120mm Mini. It is designed to be a guide camera, though it can do some lunar. However, that's not what we're here to talk about today. It costs £145 and it comes in the standard ASI red finish. At the back, you have a more sturdy USB 2 type C port, as well as naturally your ST4 port to enable guiding out the camera. The business end has a little tiny mono sensor in it that is 4.8 millimeters by 3.6 millimeters. Very small, but also very sensitive. With the F4 guide scope, you are not going to struggle finding a guide star with this at all. This camera comes with a half meter and a two meter USB 2 type C cable, a CS adapter, a 1.25 inch extension nose piece, and of course the ST4 cable. And as far as a guide camera goes, there's really not much more to say about it. It's affordable, it's sensitive, and responds really well to its job. I could make a dedicated review of this camera as it stands as like a lunar camera if you want. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. Putting the two together nets you a light and compact finder solution that just plops onto a finder shoe of your telescope and away you go getting those juicy long exposures. Therein though lies its downside. It takes up your finder shoe. So unless you're plate solving, find a way of putting a second finder scope on your telescope or an alternate way of mounting this, you're not gonna be able to use a finder scope, which means your star alignment process may be a bit more difficult or take a little bit longer. Though I don't see why you wouldn't be able to piggyback this with the correct screws and adapters. With the latest software and drivers downloaded, the 120 spoke effortlessly with PhD, and as soon as I'd made a profile and a dark library, boom, I was away getting some rather rock solid guiding. It is true though that guiding at such a wide focal length is a lot more forgiving, and that then plays in with the suitability of this combination. This guide scope and guide camera combination are best suited for short to medium focal length imaging systems. I'm gonna say up to about 750 millimeters. Though it's difficult to give you a definitive figure on that because it depends on what imaging camera you're also using. In the description below, I've put links to the guide scope suitability calculator from Astronomy Tools. 
On that website, you put the specs of your imaging system in, as well as the specs of the guiding system, and it'll tell you how suitable it is. A ratio of one to two to one to four, maybe five, seems to be a good ballpark figure to aim for. And if you get this exact bundle, I can get you ahead of the game here. If you pull the camera out to 27 millimeters and undo the lens 30 millimeters from the locking ring, you're gonna be in focus straight away. The guy scoping camera at the time of this video comes to 204 pounds. Now that might seem like a lot of money. It may even be more than your main imaging camera. However, getting into guiding really is the gateway to those longer sub exposures necessary to pull out faint detail in galaxies and nebulae without using a premium mount worth thousands of pounds. If you set aside some time to get used to the hardware and the software, as well as iron out any bugs you might come across, believe me, by the time you're taking two, three, five, ten 10 minute long sub exposures, getting clearer and neater and more detailed pictures, that price tag is going to seem like a distant memory. Guiding is a game changer and it needn't be too expensive. I really believe that this is a great entry into guiding. And if you're going to be staying with shorter focal length systems anyway, be them refractors or reflectors, then this is going to be a really sound investment. It gets you guiding, it keeps the weight down, and you also get a mono camera for some lunar work as well to boot. Thanks very much for watching everybody. There'll be links to the items in the description below. And if you dislike this video, well, you know what to do. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content reviews such as this one. And let me know, whereabouts are you on your journey? Are you just getting into guiding? And does this bundle look interesting to you? Drop me a message down below. And with that, it's time to say clear skies one and all, keep looking up and keep the cameras clicking. I'll see you later.